How to locate and buy an Akia in Japan and what it costs. Take one. Hello everyone, this is Brandon. Welcome to part one of three. How to locate and buy an Akia in Japan and what it costs. I'm going to do this in three videos. It's kind of a big subject. If I put it all into one video, one big comprehensive video, it could be done, but maybe that would be a little too much. And in the first video, we're going to talk about questions that you really need to ask yourself before you ever go about looking for and buying an Akia. I realized when I went to make these videos that I can't just tell you how to get one and how much it costs. There are some questions that you need to ask yourself before you get started and this part one is going to cover that. The part two video we're going to discuss how to find the Akia that you want to buy. Part three, the last part, I will cover the costs of buying an Akia. The three main costs. One is the cost that you will incur before purchasing the Akia. The second is the cost at time of purchase. And then the last one is the ongoing cost, the future cost that you have to pay. Now let's get started with the first main topic for this video, the initial questions that must be answered. So, so questions that you must or should ask yourself before you ever go out to buy an Akia. There will be three main points. The first point is your budget. How much money you have to spend, plan to spend, or can spend. Point number two will be location. What areas of Japan are you looking at? Which areas would you prefer to be in? Or do you just really not care? You just want to get one somewhere. And the third key point is going to be the purpose. What exactly do you plan to use your Akia for? Are you going to just live in it and retire there? Are you going to use it as a vacation summer home, turn it into like a business as uh, an inn, live there and use it as a business, have someone manage it, turn it into a cafe, restaurant, hostess bar, soap land, whatever. One little asterisk on point number three is how that relates to residency in Japan. Before I mention any of these points in any of these videos, I want you to know that I'm not an expert. Let's get started with the first one, which is budget. Any one of us who's interested in buying an Akia will have some sort of budget. It's something that you're going to have to consider. I moved out of the U.S. almost 10 years ago, and I lived in China for a while. I was actually able to save up a decent amount of money while I was in China. But when I moved to Japan, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic, and so the job that I had disappeared. I did a little bit of part-time teaching all online. The money was very low. It was inconsistent. I could barely get by. I was living on my savings. If you're in a boat like that, then your options are going to be very limited. But let's say you're married to a Japanese national or you have permanent residence or something like that, then it might be easier for you to get some type of loan or assistance. You come from another country, you're here on a work visa, which is considered a temporary residence. You can't get any type of assistance, even on something like a car, unless you've been here for more than two years at the same job, and even then it's very, very difficult. Most places just will not deal with you. Forget about that option and just focus on how much house can you afford to buy? There are a few things to consider. First of all is the house price itself. Then you have the taxes and then the fees, commissions. It's possible that there will be some back property taxes that need to be paid. If there are any due property taxes or past due property taxes, then those must be paid at the time you buy the house. If there are taxes remaining, for the last part of the year, you can pay those later, and next year's taxes haven't even been figured yet, so you'll get billed for that. Just make sure that you know how much money that you need to spend on all of that, plus repairs. You get the house, and you pay the fees, and, and it's yours, great. But what is the cost gonna be for renovation, and what is your plan for getting that taken care of? It's something to consider, and that's the first point. The second point, let's go into a little detail on location. Before you even move to Japan, or if you're already in Japan, before you buy a property, consider where you want to be. I have looked at a few Akia that were really, really nice, but they were so far away from everything. They weren't even in a town, and I just couldn't warrant putting myself in a position like that. If I were you, what I would do is, I would make a short list of the main areas 
that I want to try to find an Akia in. A little footnote here in saying that even though many people try to find an Akia in places like Kyoto or maybe even around Tokyo, a little difficult unless you're willing to spend a lot more money. I didn't think about this back when I was looking for my Akia, but I did find some old Kominka and some Machia houses that were for rent and some still are in places like Kyoto and Tokyo in these popular areas. And you might think, I don't want to rent, I want to buy. The reason I mention that is because it's quite possible they're willing to negotiate a sell. And you know the saying, you never know until you ask. So you can give that a try. The third main point that I'll end this video on is the purpose. If you'll stick around till after this, I'll give you the bonus point, purpose. What are you going to use your Akia 4. Whenever you actually buy it and get your grubby little hands on it, actually your hands will probably become grubby after you get your hands on it because it will need a lot of cleaning. What you're going to use it for or what you want to use it for is actually very important. Some people say, oh I'm going to get an Akia and I'm going to turn it into a coffee shop and cafe or maybe a restaurant or maybe an inn. Well that's all fine and dandy, but what's the location? Is the location good for that thing that you want to use it for? If you just want a vacation home or a country retreat or a place to get away from it all, you need to think about what type of property can suit you best. You can have that in mind what you're looking for. A note to this is about agricultural land, farmland. In Japan, buying farmland is much more difficult. They want to make sure that you're certified with experience in farming, that you have the equipment, the know-how, the certifications, all of that, and use it in the way in which it was originally intended to be used, which is for agricultural or farming purposes. If you cannot show that and cannot prove that, you can't even buy the land. That means you could miss out on an Akia because it is attached to the agricultural land. Maybe in some situations it's possible to work out some kind of deal where you can just buy the house that's sitting on one particular lot of land and not buy the agricultural land, but from what I've seen it's very difficult to divide that up. Oh, I have a strange problem going on with my light back there. And when you want to have that done, you have to pay for it and it's not cheap. So that's an extra expense you have to think about. Even if the seller agrees to just sell you the house and the land there, separate from the agricultural land, it's going to cost you money to have somebody come out and mark the boundaries of that land. So just be aware, aware of that. One more note about the purpose of your Akia, the one that you want to buy in Japan. If you think that coming to Japan and buying a house here is going to give you some form of residency, either permanent or temporary, you are wrong. I've seen that question many times. It's not possible. You can't just buy a house in Japan and get residency, not even temporary residency. It doesn't work that way. Wow. Just keep that in mind. I've seen that question many times and I thought it was necessary for me to answer it again here just so you know. Keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about how you're going to use your Akia, how long you plan to stay there and things like that because there are only a few certain ways that you can choose to become a resident in Japan and buying a house here is not one of them. Now for the fourth bonus point which is subscribe. That's right, subscribe. That's only part of it actually. The main thing that I want to tell you is the part two video is coming up. So you can watch that, I will let you go. See you there.